uh, for joining us tonight. Um, welcome, I'm Megan, I'm from the University of Louisville Office of Admissions. And um, I'm joined tonight by colleagues from the Office of Admissions and Financial Aid. So I just wanna introduce everyone. Uh, Scott and Rich are some of our regional recruiters. So I know all of you are from out of state and Scott is up in Chicago. Rich is in New Jersey. Yes, New Jersey. Uh, Rich covers New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So sometimes I'm like, where are you, Rich? Um, and they're going to be helping answer questions in the chat. And then James and Morgan are from our financial aid office. They're right here in Louisville, Kentucky. They're also going to be helping answer some of your questions in the chat and the Q&A. For those of you joining us on Facebook, you're going to put your questions in the comments and I will be responding to those there. And then last, but definitely not least, save the best for last, um, is our presenter this evening, Mike Abood. He is from the Financial Aid Office at the University, and he has put together this presentation specifically for our out-of-state students. So you, if you're a student from Kentucky joining us, that's wonderful. We'd love for you to spend an hour with us. Uh, but this presentation is geared toward our out-of-state students. We will have a presentation later in March for our Kentucky students. And both presentations are being recorded and they will be put on our U of L admissions YouTube playlist. So you can go back and watch them at any time if you're not able to join us live. So, um, with that being said, I am going to turn it over to Mike. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and jump right on into the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen just in a second, um, just because I wanna leave as much time as possible um, for Q&A when there are questions and answers where um, some of the, the panelists, Scott, Rich, Morgan, James, Megan, kind of feel like, hey, this is a good question that the group may wanna hear. We may save those and kind of tag those under the end so that you're hearing it verbally and seeing it in the text and the chats and so forth. So, um, so give me one second while I set up the share screen. While you're doing that, I'm gonna introduce our um, ASL interpreter this evening. Um, her name is Amy, not Rich, <laughs> but Rich is sharing his link. So we appreciate that. Uh, but Amy is going to be joining us tonight for those of you that might need our ASL services. Okay. So what's our goal tonight? Um, and if you are from Kentucky, you can definitely stick with us. Absolutely. Um, some of the numbers may be a little bit different, but absolutely stick with us just so that you become educated about some of these general perspectives. But for tonight, our goal is to try to talk about the non-resident perspective of how much is it going to cost um, how can I make sure that I'm making a wise um, financial decision? So we're going to cover some general topics like some quick office notes about how do you reach out to us individually, important steps that you should be taking between now and August um, to set yourself up for success, a general overview of how do the awards work, um, specifically the dollar amounts in terms of what you might be seeing next year, and just some general next steps. So let's go ahead and just dive on in. So in terms of our office, um, our office is, is a traditional office in terms of we're open nine to five, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please note on Thursdays, we're open from 10 until five, just because we've got some staff meetings and we're trying to uh, take care of some in-house stuff at that point in time. Um, our contact information is there. And by the way, yes, it's recorded. You can go back and watch this, but absolutely, I have no problem with anybody kind of taking their iPhone and taking a quick screenshot of some of this information so that you don't have to write it down so quickly and say, wait, wait, can you go back and, and on that slide? Um, our direct office number, 502-852-5511. Um, one of the best ways to get a hold of us, um, just chat with us over the phone. Don't panic about that number so much. Later in the presentation, I'm gonna share with you James and Morgan, their direct email and phone number contact information just so that you have a, you know, an individual that you can get a hold of rather than just a, just a general office number. 
I do want to express that yes, this is non th this presentation is for non residents, but we do know that some re some non residents are coming down for visits, and we we absolutely encourage you to do that. Wander around campus, schedule those appointments with admissions. However, we do want to make sure that you are following CDC guidelines. Make sure that you are wearing a mask um, when you are visiting campus, especially when you are entering a building. Um, we do provide masks um, uh, in certain locations, but just make sure that you're keeping yourself and us safe. So, so one of your best tools is our website, louisville.edu backslash financial aid. A, a few people over the years will sometimes tell, you know, James, Morgan, myself, the, the, the financial aid website is almost too big. And that's a good thing. Honestly, it is. We want to make sure that we work nine to five. Obviously, it's after five and we're still working. But for the most part, we want to make sure that if you have a question about how do I process a loan? How does a certain scholarship work? Why did money get taken away? That there is a guideline on uh, online that you can go visit or that you can kind of coordinate that if we're on the phone with you and we say, why don't you go to our website while we're on the phone and we can show you step by step how things happen so that you're only not only hearing it, but you're seeing it as well. Um, for example, with the loan process, how do I process a loan? On our loan page, it gives you a paragraph description. This is how most of our pages are set up. It gives you a paragraph description about the loan, the interest rate, so on and so forth. And then it will literally take you through step one, step two, step three, how do I accept the loan? Step four, how do I complete a master promissory note? And anywhere on our website where you see a red link, you will that will probably take you to the next step so that you don't actually have to type in the actual address. So our online, uh, our website is one of your best tools. FAFSA, so the free application for federal student aid. Um, so the FAFSA, I would say 80 plus percent of our student population, especially our incoming freshman population, already has the FAFSA done. If you have an older sibling and you're kind of like, you know what, we, we're not gonna bother with the FAFSA, we're just gonna be paying out of pocket, that's fine. The FAFSA is absolutely not a requirement. Um, but we do wanna re you know, encourage you that if you haven't filed a FAFSA or you haven't heard from us about FAFSA, um, that it's not too late to update your account. You can still file the FAFSA. Um, you can still go back into your FAFSA if you are just now thinking about U of L and adding our school code so that we're gonna be able to download your information. It's not too late. Um, do please make sure that if you're filling out the FAFSA for the first time, that as an incoming freshman, you are completing the 2021-2022 FAFSA because that's the one that's good for fall 21, spring 22, there is a separate application for 2021 that is currently out there. That one is only good for the past fall, the current spring, and the upcoming summer. So just make sure that you're filling out the correct FAFSA. Um, in terms of um, unique circumstances, I do want to address very briefly and acknowledge that the FAFSA asks for questions with regards to your 2019 tax information. And Everybody on this panel has heard um, a, lot of, a lot of scary stories, frankly, about my parents were furloughed, my parents lost a job, unfortunately, COVID caused more family stress and my parents divorced. We understand and are very empathetic to the fact that there, there's been a lot of scary things that have happened this past 12 months, okay? With the fast foot, we are required by the Department of Education to create a baseline using the 2019 tax information. However, if there were circumstances where there has been a death in the family, a, uh, a divorce, a change in income, we acknowledge that these are upsetting stories to share, but in some circumstances, and please, st I stress that word some, in some circumstances, we actually are able to take off the 2019 information and replace it with 2020 tax information, okay? Um, so if you've lost your job, so let's just make, make a pretend story here. So let's say that in 2019, the income was $80,000, 40 for mom, 40 for dad. But one of the two individuals lost their job. 
and that is reflected on the 2020 taxes. You can call myself, James, Morgan, we can collect some information. Maybe we can, um, uh, we have to collect some letters. We have to do possibly some simulations to see whether or not it's gonna make an impact, but we may be able to overlay the information and potentially increase your grant funding. I need to stress that that is not all cases. To give you some perspective, typically to start to qualify for some of the grant funding, the free money from the federal government, your adjusted gross income typically has, for a family of four has to be less than $65,000. That's a ballpark range. There are numerous factors that are involved in that. Every mathematical calculation is different. Every family is different, but I'm trying to give you that as a ballpark range. Um, at the same time, sometimes it's just helpful to hear from James Morgan and I over the phone to say, yes, we hear you that these unfortunate circumstances occurred. Unfortunately, per the Department of Education, mathematical calculation, the only thing you're going to qualify for is a loan. And that's the good thing about FAFSA is that we are treating everybody equally and objectively because it's mathematics. Now, the one other thing that I want to encourage you about filing the FAFSA is just in the past 48 hours, um, again, there are some families that are, nope, not going to bother with FAFSA, and that's okay. But in the past 48 hours, there's been a lot of information coming out about the third stimulus package that is coming from the Department of Education. Um, some of you may have heard this referred to as the CARES Act or the HERF Fund or HERF III. Um, in, in, when these funds are distributed by the government to the Department of Education to the schools, almost 99% of the time, in order to qualify for these funds, you have to have an active FAFSA on file and have all of your checklists complete, okay? We'll get into what checklists are in a minute, but I stress this point to you because, and please don't call James Morgan or I tomorrow and say, how do I get CARES Act or how do I get HERF money? We don't know yet. We haven't, they just, the, the, the bill is being forwarded to the White House to be signed. We probably will not see the bill passed down to the schools for at least another 60 plus days. But at least we can have a conversation if the FAFSA is on file, okay? So these checklists, I mentioned the, the, the term checklist. So in some cases, when you file a FAFSA, the Department of Education asks the schools to verify some information. In some cases, we have to verify tax information. Um, you have to um, confirm that you have completed selective service. Um, you coded yourself as a case of legal guardianship. We have to confirm that information. In these situations, th this is where it becomes critical. On a weekly basis, please make sure that you are checking your U of L email account. And if James or Morgan or an admissions representative is calling you and leaving a message, it's probably because we need something from you to ensure that we are setting you up, setting you up for success in August. So this is a, I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots where once you log into Ulink, and I think it was just, uh, hopefully Megan or, or Scott, somebody can correct me. I think it was just last week or the week before where we sent out kind of a mass blast email to remind students um, you've been using your cards gateway, but now is the time that you're going to start to transition to an awareness of checking your U of L email account and be aware of this, um, our, our U of L portal, our student portal called Ulink. So I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots about this. So if you've never logged into Ulink, when you go to ulink.louisville.edu, that those blue circles aren't really there. That's just to highlight where you're supposed to go to. So under the information and under the students, there's some really good short 15, 30 second videos of how to use Ulink. Um, uh, under the other blue circle where it says info for first time users, that's a really good description of what is my user ID and my password, okay? Um, it even prompts you how to change your password so it's something that you're gonna remember. So this is a good page that once you're on that home page. There's a couple of tools on there to help you understand what you're supposed to do. Now, once you log into the student link, um, on there you will see a task list called uh, that you can click on a task tile. We call them tiles. Um, you can click on it, and then it'll tell you what your to-do list is. Okay, this link just shows you the description of what it is. 
where it says print your financial aid form, that may be where you're actually going to print the actual form that we're requesting from you rather than us mailing the form to your home address, okay? We're trying to save a little bit of postage in a few trees, sorry. Um, so in terms of verification, I wanna to touch on this very, very promptly because the other ones that I mentioned, selective service, legal guardianship, those less than 10% of the population have to complete those. But with verification, about 30% of the student population typically has to complete verification. I want to stress that you didn't do anything wrong on your FAFSA. Um, it's just the government's way of making sure that the tax information that's on your FAFSA is accurate in comparison to what's on file with the IRS. Um, here in about seven to 10, not has to do this. So if you go out to your ULINK account, you don't see a to-do list that says verification, you're okay. Ignore this part of the, the presentation. But if you see this, just be aware that in about three or four days, business days, where we, U of L, are actually going to send you another presentation link for the 16th, where we are actually going to show you how to print the form and how to actually fill it out step by step. We're literally going to break down the form, sign your name here, check box this, do this, turn in this tax document. So it's a great opportunity. Um, almost everybody that watches that, I would say 85% of those individuals complete the process within about 10 days that, that actually watch the video. So I also want to stress that um, please understand that every school does verification differently. So if you're still shopping around and saying, I'm thinking about U of L and three or four other schools, that's okay. But realize that if you complete verification with another school, it doesn't mean you haven't done it with us. You've got to do our process separately. There's also a, a lot of third party agencies, such as a program called Kia Verify, that does it for a number of Kentucky schools. We do our verification process independently, okay? So when I start talking about awards, I'm going to start throwing out a number of terms. I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page about what these terms mean. So Scholarships. Scholarships are typically awards such as the national, uh, the, the regional award, um, whereby based on some factor, whether it is the, uh, the place you're currently living, your ACT score, your GPA, some aspect of community service, something that's unique about you, and we're giving you the institution or an outside organization is giving you a scholarship to go to college, okay? free money that does not have to be paid back, okay? Grants, grants are typically generated either by the, the federal, state, or the institution based on your FAFSA information. Typically, it's a need-based award. The FAFSA, the, one of the things, one of the ways to describe the FAFSA is that it determines objectively your strength or your family's strength and ability to pay for school. So the grants are, are awarded based on that strength and ability, okay? Loans. We're going to talk about loans a lot here in a second. I know it's kind of a bad four-letter word, but um, the reality is, is that about two-thirds of the population nationally take out student loans, okay? The key is making sure that you're being responsible about taking out those loans, okay? The last one is work-study. We'll talk about working on campus and off campus throughout the presentation, but I'm going to use these terms kind of interchangeably throughout the rest of the presentation. So one quick word about scholarships. If you are receiving an outside scholarship away from the university with regards to a high school, church, community organization, a parent employer, somebody else is giving you a scholarship. Per federal law, it is important that you report those scholarships to us um, so that we can make that part of your award notification. Um, it's federal rules. Most of the organizations will send the check to us or have our name on it. So you have to bring it to us anyway but so that you can have an accurate picture of your award letter, you, the, the checks typically don't come out until June or July when you kind of let the organization know, I'm going to U of L. then we'll get the check. But in the meantime, you can actually go out to our website under the form section, you can actually report other aid and all you have to do is type in, my name is Mike Abood, my student ID number is this, and I'm getting $500 from my church, or, from my church. great will add a row onto your award notification that says $500 from an outside organization, okay? With regards to, sorry, it's rolling back and forth. My mouse is being very sensitive tonight for some reason. 
Um, regarding the Pell Grant Award, the nice thing about the federal Pell Grant is that it's the same at every institution, okay? It doesn't matter if you are coming to the University of Louisville or you are coming to us from, you know, a school in Chicago where Scott is or, you know, uh, New Jersey or Philadelphia where Rich is. If their award letter says a Pell Grant, we all should be saying the same thing. But I just want to let you know that at U of L and at most schools right now, most of us were giving a projected Pell Grant award based on the amounts from 2020, 2021. At this point in time, um, the Department of Education just released the 21-22 Pell Grant. It's only a difference of less than $100. So, but in about three weeks, most schools are going to update their accounts and then send you a new award letter letting you know that your Pell Grant has now been bumped up to the appropriate 21-22 year, okay? Um, we'll send you an email letting you know once that's, that's happened, okay? So work study, we're gonna dive into work study a little bit more when we actually start looking at the offer sheet, but I wanna stress right now, work study is based on the idea that you filled out your FAFSA, you met certain criteria in terms of being a probably a Pell eligible student, and you, want, you marked on your FAFSA that you were interested in working on campus. If you didn't mark that you were inter interested in work study or you didn't qualify for the Pell Grant, that doesn't mean that you can't work on campus. We actually only have money for about 500 students to work federal work study um, jobs, but there's well over 2000 jobs on campus for students to work at the library, work at the student activity center, work for Megan as a tour guide on campus. So. Um, if you don't see a work study award on your, on your account, don't panic. It's okay. Um, we might still be able to look at your account and see if we can qualify you for that, but don't feel like you got left out of something because you didn't get a work study award. Okay. So loans. So here's a couple of things about loans that I want to touch on. So the loans that students you see on your award sheet, um, those are in your name. You have to understand those are your responsibility. There's no co-signing with mom and dad. They're not gonna be mom and dad's responsibility. It's really important to understand a few things about those. The nice thing about the student loans is that from a student perspective, they're gonna be some of the best interest rate loans that you ever receive in your life. Mom and dad can educate you about mortgage loans, car loans, Megan shaking her head yes, being saying it's tough being an adult. Um, but in terms of student loans, these, you know, these are probably going to be the, you know, the lowest interest rate loans that you're ever going to see. Subsidized means that it's interest free while you're in school. Unsubsidized means that interest accrues on the loan while you're in school. But the nice thing about these loans is repayment doesn't begin until six months after graduation or six months after you stop taking classes. Okay. I do want to point out that I know that there has been a lot of scary stories in the past three or four months and frankly, the last two or three years about loan indebtedness and loan forgiveness. I want to stress that is all rumor right now, okay? There is no fact of what the Department of Education or Congress or the White House is going to do in terms of loan forgiveness, okay? Um, so don't plan on, oh, I'm gonna borrow this because something's gonna happen in four years. You need to make sure that you are managing today, not on the hopes of what might happen, okay? Um, I also want to touch on parent plus loans. We absolutely encourage our families to put award sheets side by side and have what I tend to call the dinner table conversation of U of L is going to cost this much minus the financial aid. It's going to be this much X school, same thing. What is the better financial choice for us? Academically, we feel we are very competitive, but there may be circumstances where staying in state or not coming to U of L and not paying housing costs may be a better financial decision um, long term over four years. But one of the things that we do, and, and we've heard this from our parents, is that when we put the offer sheet next to one another, we see the Pell Grant is the same, we see the student loan is the same, but the other school is offering us a plus loan. We at U of L 100% will, will process a plus loan for you. We choose not to post the plus loan onto the offer sheet intentionally because we don't want you to feel like we are pushing the loan on you as a way that you must borrow this loan to take the loan out. Um, 100%, if you see a PLUS loan, you can know that you can probably borrow the same amount of the PLUS loan at U of L. okay? 
Um, I do also want to point out with the PLUS loan, the biggest difference between the PLUS loan and the student loan is it's the parent loan. You, the parent, are signing for it. It is your responsibility to repay the loan back. You cannot in the future consolidate that loan into your son or daughter's name, okay? The other major difference is, is that repayment starts 60 days after, excuse me, um, uh, 30 days after the second spring disbursement. So in January, that's when you're going to go into repayment on the PLUS loan. You can defer the loan until the student graduates, but it's accruing interest at that point, okay? The one other thing that I do want to point out, especially because this is our non-resident um, population, is that some states, specifically the one that is most common is New Jersey, offers a, offers a New Jersey plus loan or a different state plus loan. The advantage of these is that you don't have to stay in state to utilize them. The, the state will allow you to um, transfer, you know, utilize them at U of L or at another state. But many of these states intentionally make the interest rate one percent lower than the federal rate. So right now, the interest rate for the plus loan is—it just went out of my head. Um, James is at the office, and James has it on, and we'll put it in the chat. I'm so sorry; it just it literally left my brain. But let's just say it's seven percent. I guarantee you that the New Jersey rate is six percent. Okay. Um, there's also options of outside or alternative loans. These are loans from, let's say, Sally Mae, Wells Fargo, Citizens Bank, the list can go on and on. Um, typically, you only want to use these when um, your credit score is so much better than what the federal government can offer, um, or you have a special relationship such as um, your former military and you're going to go through the Navy credit federal credit union and that is why the parent plus loan is going to be at six percent maybe the the navy federal credit union is going to be at a lower percentage rate okay if you are the student and you're going to choose to process the student loan we'll talk about this well into may and june but please don't forget in order for the loan to process um, you do have to eventually complete a master promissory note this is the contract that says you agree to pay the loan back and an entrance interview, this is the government's way of making sure you understand your rights and responsibility at studentaid.gov. We have literally several hundred students who accept the loan. And then sometime in October or early, you know, mid-September, we actually have to cancel the loan because they don't complete all the steps. It's just like a car loan or, or mortgage loan. If you don't complete all the steps, you don't get to keep that house or car, okay? So you gotta make sure that you are being responsible. I realize that this is scary as an 18 year old, but You've got to make sure that you are being responsible and reading these emails and because the loans are going to be in your name, okay? Last thing about loans, I promise I'm going to get off my high horse about them, but be responsible about your loan, your loan indebtedness. Again, I know there's a lot of scary stories out there, but unfortunately, some of that is, is um, you know, myth, okay? The reality is, is that the national average of student loan indebtedness is about $27,000, okay? I'm not gonna lie and sugarcoat it. As a non-resident, that amount goes up a little bit. That's what pushes the average up a little bit. But on a national average, um, the amount is about 27,000. At U of L, our loan indebtedness is about $24,000. So I, I'm trying to be very honest and give you that perspective of, of a national and local, but acknowledging that as a non-resident, the cost is gonna be higher. So that loan indebtedness is gonna be higher. As a student, please make sure that you are checking your loan balance every three to six months. This is one of the easiest things that um, uh, loan repayment agency says that students who are responsible borrowers who don't go into default, they check their balance every three to six months, okay? The other thing that we want you to do is consider paying on the interest and if possible, the principal balance while you're in school. Um, make sure that, you know, if the interest is $5 a month, use that work study dollars or that side, that side hustle job that you've got, pay that simple $5 a month. If you can't pay $50 a month to chip away at the principal balance. Students that do that, that pay $50 a month over a four or five year period can pay up to as much as $25 to $3,500 off of their principal balance. The other thing to do, and I'm not saying that you should do this, but Make a deal with mom and dad. If you get a 3.0 every semester, maybe mom and dad are willing to make a payment of $500 on that principal balance so that, no, you're not wiping out the whole amount, but you're wiping out, wiping out 
10, 15% of it. So that again, you're controlling the overall amount that you're borrowing and it doesn't sting so much at the end of that four or five year journey, okay? Okay, so that's all great. Let's really talk about the, what do I owe? What's the bill going to uh, uh, be? So a quick word about offer sheets. So we've, we've discussed this before. We've told you how to get one. I'm gonna go over it really quick. So the offer sheet that was mailed to you, that's a one-time thing. We're, you know, we're gonna, yes, we're gonna send off a stamp and kill a lot of trees to mail out. I think James and Morgan have, have uh, stuffed close to 6,000 plus freshman award letters because I don't do that. I make them do that. I'm so sorry. Um, but um, uh, we only do that really one time. Like the first time we award you the federal aid, that's when we're gonna mail it to you. We also will email it to you at that same, on, that, on or around that same date. But after that, anytime there's a single dollar change on your account. So if your scholarship goes up by $1 or goes down by $1, we're going to send you an email that says, your award sheet has been updated. Here's the new award sheet. Um, if, you, if you're not sure, if you can't find it, you lost it in the mail, you weren't sure about UofL and now you're coming back to us. Here's the easiest way to find it. Log into your UofL email account. And in, in Microsoft Outlook, on the uh, top right-hand side, there's a search option, and you're going to type the word offer into uh, that, uh, that section. And you may see one, you may see five different awards because, again, every time an award change, we sent you a new offer sheet, okay? Um, I do also want to stress that, and we're going to go off, over the offer sheet here in just a second, but please don't freak out about some of the numbers. Please understand that some of these numbers are estimates. Some of these numbers are for the academic year and not by semester. So please understand and just give me a little bit of patience as we review the offer sheet. So this is what the offer sheet looks like. The first page, we're not gonna cover it. It's really just a welcome, it's a feel good. We're glad that you're thinking about coming to UofL. Here's some concepts to make sure that you're understanding, okay? Really, the second page is what most people care about, okay? So really, my mouse is just being really bad, so. Maybe I'm, I'll start using the, the, the keypad instead. So this is what most people care about, the second page. And what we really want to make sure that you're doing is that if you are calling myself or James or, or, or Morgan that have this offer sheet in front of us, you know, parents, you got to understand that your son and daughter, they're the 18-year-old responsible party at this point in time. If you call us and say, hey, can you tell me what Johnny's scholarship is? We can't. It's FERPA law. But if you've got the offer sheet in front of you, you can tell us. Hey, Morgan, James, I see that my son's been offered a national scholar for $10,000. We're going to be looking at the same thing. We know that we're, we're talking about the same student, the same case and the same numbers, okay? So with regards to the offer sheet itself, I'm going to kind of, I, I made the screenshots as big as I could, but these pink highlights is what I'm gonna to try to focus on section by section. So please understand that most of this information is based off of your 2021 22 FAFSA, one of the co most common errors that we see is that housing and meal plan, it should reflect as 9564. But if you marked on your FAFSA that you were coming to the University of Louisville, but you said that you were going to be living at home, realistically as a non-resident, that's probably not gonna happen. Your housing and meal plan shows up as 300 or $600, okay? So yes, you can change some of that information on your FAFSA, you don't have to, we will update that as, you as we approach the billing process. This is again, just more to be used as a planning or uh, a resource tool, okay? The other thing to understand is most of these numbers in terms of the cost, the tuition, the housing, the meal plan, these are all based on the 2021, 2021 cost because the Board of Trustees and the um, Council for Post-Secondary Ed Education in Kentucky will probably not release the tuition dollar amounts for 21-22 until May. Um, again, I don't wanna speak in rumor. There's a lot of discussion about, you know, some states are gonna go flat in terms of we're gonna keep tuition the same. Some schools are gonna talk about, you know, going up three to 4%. All of that again is just rumor at this point in time. And we don't wanna deal with that. We, we're gonna deal with the numbers that are in front of us right now. And you just have to understand that if it goes up three or 4%, we tried to express that, that these were estimated numbers, okay? So this section, your financial aid award package, this is what's going to kind of break down for you 
how much you got in a Pell Grant, how much you got in a, in a scholarship. Um, and I know that that term there, loan self-help aid, it's a weird term, it's a government term, we have to use it. That one, that is an optional amount. Please understand that if you filed a FAFSA and we offered you a student loan, you absolutely control whether or not you're going to accept that loan or not. You have the ability to log into Ulink and say, I decline the loan. And if at some point in time you realize, wow, I declined the loan because I thought there was gonna be no other option, but I really do need the loan re-offered, you can always email us and we can repost the loan in an offered status, okay? You haven't missed out on anything at this point in time. This third section, that's what most people wanna talk about. That's what most people wanna say, X minus Y equals Z. And that's what we're gonna spend a little bit of time kind of covering, okay? So the work study, I do wanna to touch on that one last time. Please understand with work study, if you're offered an amount of $4,500, that amount is a, it's, it's almost good to kind of consider that as a debit card. We offer you $4,500, but you are paid bi-weekly based on the number of hours you work. Most students work somewhere around 10 to 12 hours. You can probably work about 15 hours an, an average a week and earn the whole $4,500, but most students work somewhere around 10 to 12 hours a week. But if you do that every two weeks, the amount that you, the amount of hours that you earn, that amount is subtracted from that $4,500 and then direct deposited to your preferred Fit Third, PNC, Chase, whatever bank account that you want. It is not directly uh, diverted to the bill that you, um, that you have. You can individually take those payments and apply them to the, to the cost. And that's why we've tried to break that down in terms of the annual gift loan, and that's your total upfront cost. And then we've kept the loan amount separate below it, okay? So here's an example of an individual, a non-resident, again, Chicago, Nashville, Florida, doesn't matter where, um, in terms of their overall tuition being about $28,000, their meal plan, their housing and their meal plan being about $9,500, their average cost of books, and please understand that is an average, the more hours that you take, if you choose to rent your books, you buy used books, those numbers can fluctuate, but that dollar amount of 1200 is an average, so you're talking about that overall cost being about 39,000, 39, okay? In this situation, and again, every, every student is unique. We, we simply kind of tried to find an average student. So in this student situation, they are a Pell eligible student. They got a, an, a small SEOG grant from the government, plus they got their national scholar uh, award. So that amount is slid into the gift aid uh, amount minus that. This student, you have the option again of taking the loans. So you subtract that and your overall upfront cost for the year is about $20,000. Now, remember, this amount is gonna be split half in fall and half in spring. And we'll talk about the billing process in just a moment. In some cases, it is very rare, but I just wanna point it out that if somebody's watching, maybe you got a plus, maybe you've already, you're, you're going to process the plus loan, or maybe you got some additional scholarship funds and that amount exceeds that amount of 39,000. Uh, 39, the total upfront cost would have a negative number in front of it. And that is the amount that we're going to refund back to you at a later date, okay? So again, I just, I talked about this earlier, but it's very helpful parents. If you're gonna call us without Johnny and Susie next to you, then please make sure that you've got the offer sheet so that all three of us, the admissions counselor, we can talk a little more freely because we know that you're already aware of Johnny, your son and daughter's individual cases, okay? So, Here's, you know, James and Morgan, um, there's their direct contact email, um, there's their direct phone numbers, um, and this is one of those where you want to take a quick snapshot because we're not going to cover each individual state. Please understand, we don't care who you contact. We try to break up the, the, the country in terms of, you know, different regions belong to, you know, James, Morgan, you can always call me as well. We really, the three of us work very well together. We don't care who, which one of the three of us you call. Um, but use your phone, take a quick snapshot, and that way you can say, oh, I'm from California. Okay, then I'm probably going to call Morgan. You know, I'm from Illinois. I'm probably going to call James. Um, you know, so, and we do this intentionally because we always know that the next day, tomorrow, um, after these sessions, the three of us are going to be probably getting three or four phone calls, and we're trying to kind of divide it out to make sure that one person doesn't get more than the other, okay? 
Um, so how do I actually pay the bill? We're not going to worry too much about this, this tonight because really that process doesn't happen until July. But we want to give you a general kind of foundational understanding. Again, our website, um, or I should say the bursar's office website, louisville.edu backslash bursar, their office is set up very similar to ours where they have tons of information about the billing process, payment plan, so on and so forth. In terms of how do I pay the bill, you can always pay by check in the office, online. Because of COVID, we are very much trying to limit the cash transactions on campus. You can pay with a credit card. I personally, I realize that um, a lot of people like to swipe the card because you're going to get points, air miles, and so forth. However, nine times out of 10, you don't want to do that at a university because we cannot absorb the convenience fee charge. So you're getting a percentage charge on top of your normal charge um, when you're using a credit card. I do want to touch on 529s for a moment because we do get a lot of non-resident questions about 529s. So when you are processing a 529, you will get your bill in July. Nine times, every 529 company does it a little bit differently, but theoretically, most places will ask you for the billing statement from the university, which you will have in July. You will send that to your organization with probably a PDF form that they will supply to you. And then at that point in time, the organization, the, the, the financial uh, planner, the, the um, Charles Schwab, um, the, the state organization, they will do one of two things. They will forward the check directly to the bursar's office to make the payment, or they will forward the check to the parent um, or the benefactor, and then you cash the check and then deposit the check to the University of Louisville, okay? We will have a separate Facebook Live event in July where the head of the bursar's office, myself, um, several other representatives, but primarily the head honcho, the head of the bursar, is going to actually do a, here's how to read your bill, here's how to make the payment, here's how to set up the payment plans and so forth. I do wanna to touch on the payment plans because again, we wanna make sure that you're having a appropriate amount of time to plan. So we do offer payment plans at the University of Louisville. So let's say that your semester charge, and again, I'm just making this up because it's easy, um, is your semester charge is about $2,300. Your total aid package is about $10,000. So the difference is 12,500. Trust me, it will never work out to be that rounded number. But um, at that point in time, you have the right to divide that amount by five so that you are paying 2,500 over a five month, you know, 2,500 each, um, each month, July, August, September, October, November. The first payment, there is a one-time $25 processing fee. There is no additional interest or um, charges that occur with the payment plan. If you miss the payment plan in July, we do have two payment plans, but we want the majority of students to sign up for the five month one. If you miss that date, unfortunately what happens is, is that you are now dividing that 12,500 by, by four instead of by five and you're simply increasing your monthly payments. The bill does have to be resolved by November because that's when you register for the spring semester, okay? So in terms of evaluating aid packages, I just wanna to touch on a couple of things in terms of what, again, we tend to call that dinner table conversation. Students understand as parents, we wanna make sure that your dreams are happening, but we also wanna be very real about the overall cost. We've thrown out some pretty big numbers tonight in terms of $38,000 semester cost of up to, you know, of up to, you know, $18,000. These are dollar amounts of, it's a car. It's not a, you know, $50, can I go, you know, can I have $50 for gas and, you know, going out with my friends? This is a pretty big uh, investment, okay? So you've also got to think about, this is a four-year investment. What we've been talking about tonight is the first year uh, of the freshman cost. We've also been talking about the direct cost versus the aid package. Um, we're going to talk about direct cost in a little, in, in just a moment, because we know that some schools will present the uh, what's called cost of attendance versus direct cost. So I'll touch on that in just a moment. But we want to make sure that you're thinking about other other incidental costs, such as travel. Most of you, you know, I, I'm guessing all of you are, are non-resident students. Um, and in that case, the question then becomes, are you traveling from Cincinnati? Okay, you're probably driving at that point in time because it's about three and a half hours. You're, you're in Chicago with Scott. Okay, that's about a six hour, six hour drive. 
lots of easy direct flights for, you know, through Southwest for a few hundred dollars. At that point in time, are you coming from Dallas? Okay, you're probably no longer driving, you're flying. Um, and the question then becomes, how often are you going home? Well, if you're from Cincinnati and it's a three hour drive, okay, you might be going home every two to three weeks. But if you're from Dallas, you're not driving home to Dallas every three to four weeks. Mom and dad probably are only going to fund a plane ticket for, the question is fall break, Thanksgiving, Christmas. That's three plane tickets just in the first semester. Realistically, fall break is too short. Make a really good friend, go home to their house and, and discover you know, aspects of living in the state of Kentucky. Um, parking, laptops, these are all things that, that aren't gonna show up on the bill, but that first semester, you have to start thinking about how those dollars are going to add up. Also, have an honest conversation about your career objectives. Why are you coming to the University of Louisville? Absolutely every one of us, Megan, Scott, Rich, they have spent hours upon hours making sure that we are recruiting you and educating you about the academics that we can offer you here at UofL and how, how our programs are you know, heads above other schools and why we are unique. But you also have to ask the question, okay, if I'm going to borrow more than the national average, if I'm gonna borrow $50,000 worth of loans, does that align with my career goals? Am I going to be a teacher? There's nothing wrong with going into education. Everybody on this panel can raise their hand and say, say I have some related you know, bachelor's or master's degree in education. But you have to ask the question, my salary is probably going to top out at about this versus I'm going to L for the engineering program. Your starting salary may be $72,000, okay? So barring 30, 40, $50,000 in loans, you will be able to pay that back. So again, I realize that these are somewhat scary conversations and somewhat, you know, are you telling me not to come to UofL? That is not what I'm telling you. I just wanna make sure that you're having an honest conversation um, and not surprised by numbers later in the, later in this, uh, in the uh, uh, transition to coming to UofL. So why do some schools talk about cost of attendance and other schools talk about direct cost? Um, so when you look at an award sheet, everybody's award sheet is a little bit different. We choose at UofL to present direct costs. These are direct funds that are paid to the University of Louisville. That is why on that offer sheet, you saw tuition, room and board, books and supplies, because that is what everybody, whether you are from Chicago or Cincinnati or, or California, that's what everybody's going to pay as a non-resident student. On the other hand, cost of attendance, which is typically, we have a link on our offer sheet that will take you to the federal shopping sheet or the co college financing plan. This is information that is used by the Department of Education to create an average information of tuition, room and board books, the same three things that are on direct cost, but then they also include transportation, which again, we've already established that if you're from Chicago, Louisville, or Cincinnati, your travel costs are going to be very widely different. Your personal expenses, how much are you spending on clothes, medical insurance, so on and so forth. The loan fees, again, these are all kind of hidden costs that you don't pay to the school, but as a cost of attendance, we have to provide that information to the Department of Education, but it's not something that you ever directly are impacted by, okay? So again, we've already talked about um, some of these um, ticket items. I do wanna just touch on them one more time. Um, in terms of the big ticket items, I do wanna advocate in terms of the city of Louisville, we have a great cost of living in the city of Louisville. Um, being, you know, being in our location, Louisville is fantastic. If you have not had a chance to come down and visit us, we offer kind of the best of both worlds in terms of big city feel. No, we don't have a pro team here. I get it. Some people, you know, snob at us and be like, well, you don't have an NBA, you don't have an NFL team. You know what we do have? We have one of the best soccer programs out there um, that's already won the, the, the championship twice. Uh, an amazing stadium here. Um, that's only going to grow. I'm a bit of a soccer nut if you can't tell. Um, but realistically, we offer, you know, awesome concert venues, um, off, you know, amazing museums that are only, you know, the Louisville Slugger Museum. Um, there's so many wonderful big city options here, but you have a small time, you know, a small, a small city feel. Um, Louisville is not jam packed in terms of a major downtown area. A lot of it is spread out over a large um, square mileage area. So it doesn't have that kind of compact high rise city feel, okay? Um, I do also wanna you know, make, make points of 
educate yourself about the meal plan options, more of that information, um, especially from the student perspective. Those are great questions to ask your, um, uh, uh, your orientation leader. I also know that the orientation coordinator is actually gonna try to have dining services plan one of these kinds of events because we do acknowledge that I think we offer something like, Megan, shake your head, like 15 different meal plans, something like that. Um, and parents are like asking us, which meal plan should we choose? And we're like, I don't know. Um, we don't eat on campus. Um, so a lot of us do, but we don't eat, you know, every meal on there. So again, we talked about traveling home. How, you know, ask how many, how often are you going to travel home? Start to plan out how much those airplane tickets are going to cost. In terms of local cost um, or, or some of the cheaper costs, you know, parking pass. If you're not bringing a car to campus, you can bring a car to campus as a freshman. But if you don't have to, then you don't have to worry about that, that parking pass. Local travel, we have an amazing TARC system here. A bus, the TARC is what we refer to as our, our, um, our, um, our busing system. Um, intentionally, we have um, urban, urban planners at the University of Louisville communicating with our TARC um, representatives to make sure that we have local pickups that can link students to other major locations throughout the city. Um, do also realize that the numbers that we presented in the offer sheet, those are your general tuition fees or tuition costs. There may be some cases where you have fees such as a lab fee or a tech fee or a, uh, a certain program fee that if you are going to be a certain major, sometimes you have certain classes that have additional charges of 25 to $120. Again, nothing overwhelming. Not, it's not gonna be an extra thousand dollars, but we don't wanna hide from this discussion and say, you might have a few, a few extra hundred dollars in your overall billing. Computer cost, have an honest conversation now, not in August about, are you going to purchase a new laptop? We have literally um, you know, three or four amazing um, laptop or um, computer stations on campus. We are following safety protocol. In fact, um, as they as COVID was coming out, they literally began like sh kind of shutting down different computers or like turning them you know away so that there would be additional space. And still, there were plenty of computers for students to use. But are you going to bring your own laptop? That might be a cost of three hundred to thirteen hundred dollars in terms of what you are buying so that you have your own personal laptop. Are you going to buy athletic tickets? We are all very hopeful that we're all going to be getting the vaccine. We're all going to be opening up venues more and really football, any, any college that you go to, football, soccer, basketball, these are all great community events, but at Louisville, they are really special events. Um, it really is how, one of the ways we all come together, um, but there's a ticket cost with that, okay? Um, obviously, as a student, there's dis discounted um, options, but we want you to realize that if you're going to go to these events or if you're going to be involved in Greek life, that's another cost association. Um, the other thing we want to talk about in terms of managing your cost is managing your hours. One of the great things at the University of Louisville is, is that we don't charge you per credit hour. We charge you based on full-time enrollment. So once you are 12 hours, that's your maximum charge. If you take 12, 15, 18 credit hours, you know, so four, five, or six credits or classes, guess what? You're still charged the same amount. Now, with that being said, don't overload yourself. Don't end up taking, hey, I'm going to take eight classes. I'm going to take 21 hours. I actually know a few juniors and seniors that are taking 21 hours. They are very focused. They are, la they are laser time management focused, but that's not everybody. Just realize that you have to manage what you're taking. Um, also realize that you don't want to create a situation where you're taking too many classes and then you end up withdrawing from classes. Again, you're not going to be charged, you know, any more, or any less, but you don't want to end up with too many W's on your transcript, okay? The other thing to do is consider summer school. Yes, we would love that to happen at U of L, but another option, especially for non-resident students, is to go home in, during the summer term and take classes at a local community college. Most community colleges are going to charge you somewhere around, and I'm going to, I'm going to ballpark this, somewhere around 150 to 250 per credit hour as a resident of that state. So that means that you can probably complete a class for under $1,000 and then transfer the class back to U of L. If you are going to play that game, please hear me. If you are going to play that game, you've got to make sure that you talk to your academic advisor ahead of time. 
and ensure that that class is actually going to transfer and count towards your degree here. Don't assume that, oh, I'm gonna take math 110 at blank community college and then bring it back and say, the advisor looked at it and say, that class doesn't count here. You, you, you wasted your money, okay? So we're gonna end on a couple of concepts about working on campus or working in the local Louisville area. So if you don't know, and many of you probably don't because you're not residents, UPS has one of the largest world hubs, literally five miles down the road um, from campus, okay? Um, it's a major international hub. All of your, you know, your Amazon and your orders that you've been making the last, you know, the last year because of COVID, at some point in time, probably came, this came through the city of Louisville, okay? Um, over 2,000 students work at the Metro College program. I encourage you, go to that website that is listed on the website right there. There's a lot of great, I, I refer to them as commercials, that kind of educate you about what it means to be a Metro College student. Basically, you are agreeing to work, you are a UPS employee, you are working third shift, um, but you get paid a salary, and on top of that salary, you get your in-state portion of your tuition. I have to stress that, the in-state portion of your tuition. I appreciate that Scott is shaking his head. Yes, yes, Mike, make sure you clarify that point. Um, because um, we get a lot of non-residents saying, hey, I wanna do this Metro College program. And they think, oh, the, the $20,000 the 20, worth of tuition is gonna go away. No, it's the $11,000 of the Kentucky portion of the tuition that is essentially removed from your bill at that point in time. With that being said, you do have to acknowledge that's essentially one third of your cost, okay? So if you, kind of stare, you know, stack that with your NSP, your, your Metro College, now you're two thirds of the way there in terms of what your overall cost may be doing. Please also understand Metro College is not for everybody. There's a lot of time management in terms of juggling um, your education, life, social life, and a job, okay? Um, you don't have to do it for all four years. You can choose to do it for one, two, three semesters. It's a semester by semester contract, okay? How else can you pay for school? Now, I realize that now graduating high school, especially now there's a lot of community organizations saying, now is the time to find a summer job. I'm all for that, but do your homework and try to figure out, do some of those companies that you're looking at have offices in Louisville, Kentucky, okay? Because a lot of times, and I know this from uh, you know, a, a student that a lot of times when you work at a grocery store like Kroger's or Target or something like that, you can, if you've worked there long enough, you can actually communicate back to um, the corporate office and say, hey, I work at, at Target in Chicago, but I'm moving to Louisville. They don't want to train a new, a new hire. They would rather just hire somebody that has had training for four or five months just bring them down to Louisville. Yes, the store is different, but all the policies and procedures are the same. Um, but as you are researching who you are going to work for, look at their HR website. The ones listed here, and I'm not gonna cover all of them, but for example, if you work at you know, Lowe's or Home Depot, you, know, you might get an annual benefit of you know, $1,500 to $2,500. In some cases, you might have to like work for the company for six months or 120 days to qualify for the benefit, but that may be another long-term option in terms of not met, waving a magic wand and making the whole amount of the tuition go away, but a portion of it go away. I do wanna stress about Starbucks. Um, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about Starbucks. I'm just be making you aware um, that I know a lot of 18, 20 year olds like that kind of um, you know, easy fast food work, but their HR program, they are only advocating or they only offer um, tuition remission for um, Arizona State's online program. So you gotta be careful and make sure that you are reading um, where these benefits are allowable or transferable to, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking because I'm gonna start choking here in a second, but just a very quick recap. Please make sure you are following through with any emails that we're sending you Make sure that you are completing those to-do lists because otherwise James and Morgan are gonna be calling you every two weeks. You, you need to do verification. You need to do selective service. Please pick up the phone and do what I'm asking you to do. Um, make, make sure that you're also being careful about outside mailings. And I'm not necessarily saying other schools. I'm, what I'm talking about is organizations that are, are predatory in the sense of, hey, take a loan through our company. 
really talk to the school, whether it is U of L or another school that you're you're thinking about. Talk to the school first before giving people money. There's an organization out there, and I'm not going to name names, but there's an organization out there that essentially traps students or parents and says, "Hey, if you pay me $500, I'll help you navigate how to get a scholarship." Trust me, Scott and, and Rich are sitting there saying, "I'll do it for free." Okay. Um, Call me and I'll tell you the honest truth about how to get a scholarship, not only from U of L, but from a national organization. Um, and they'll give you a more honest perspective than giving somebody $500. You can call and ask them and say, you know what, I'd like to file an appeal and write this letter. They'll tell you what to put in the letter, okay? They're not gonna write it for you, but they'll coach you through that process. Realize that from the admissions perspective, you're going to start getting a lot of information, especially to your U of L email account, about the process of sending in your deposit, signing up for orientation. Most people have already signed up for the housing process, but again, make sure that you are monitoring your U of L email account regarding these things. So at this point in time, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to start taking a drink because I am going to start coughing here in a second. And I'll, uh, I'll let Megan kind of fill me in on questions we might have missed. I'm, I'm, so when I share my screen, I can't see the chat, so I don't know anything that has happened virtually for the last hour. Um, so I'll let you all fill me in on what I might have missed. I, I will add in for anyone that uh, is interested in UPS Metro College, we just had a presentation the other night. That video was recorded, so you can find that on uh, the U of L admission Facebook page as well. So if you want to get a little bit more information and, and hear from the representatives of UPS Metro, please check that out on the Facebook page. We do not have any questions in the presentation chat. I am not sure if Megan has any in the Facebook chat. I've been talking on mute. Um, we had a couple, but I was able to answer those. They were very basic, Mike. I was able to handle them. I did look up, we have about 16 different meal plans, so not more than 20. So for next time, you'll know. Yeah, really quiet group, but that's okay. Taking the information in. Um, I will just plug a couple more programs that we have coming up. So we have this session this evening. Uh, tomorrow we're having a session on our Speed School of Engineering. And then the next several weeks in um, March, we will have different programs about academics. We will be hosting a campus housing virtual session on March 18th. I know a lot of people are interested in that. We're also hosting a session for our cultural and equity center coming up at the end of March. And we're gonna do a fun bingo night. Um, so trying to throw in some fun activities as well. Um, so Scott, can you post the um, find your counselor link and the link to our visits in the chat? Thank you so much. Yes, the visits in there. Thank you. Okay, I do want to let you all know we are open for in-person visits. Um, we host visits every day, Monday through Saturday, two times a day. And we are, excuse me, we are, um, you know, using all of our COVID precautions. Um, you are required to wear a mask and we do have smaller groups than we normally would, but we are open, campus is open. And if you would rather just kind of tour campus on your own, um, we do have self-guided tour options as well. All right. So thank you all so much. Um, oh, how do I get to the U of L webpage from Chris? Oh, I think Rich already answered that. And our visits are at 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday, they are at 10.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. They're about two hours long. So it's about a 20 minute 
uh, presentation and then about a 90 minute walking tour of campus. And our tour does include a stop at a residence hall. So I know housing is very important to our out of state families. You wanna see housing on campus. And so we do take you to a residence hall um, and we do have lot or excuse me, virtual tours of all of our residence halls online. So even if you don't get to see the specific one you want to in person, you can check those out online. All right, well, thank you to all of our panelists this evening, our financial aid experts, Mike, Morgan, and James. Thank you, Scott and Rich, for joining us from other parts of the country. And as always, we- Sorry, yeah. Megan, sorry. So if you do come to campus for one of Megan's visits and you do wanna see Morgan and James in person, absolutely give us a call. Um, just because we kind of are in a slightly different rotation because we're trying to stack our staff in terms of COVID, how many people we have in the office. If you call Morgan and say, oh, I'm gonna come on blank day, but she's not gonna be there, that's fine. James, James or, or myself will be there in, in person. We're gonna give you the same, you know, great service and then vice versa. I'm, I may be on vacation, fine, talk to James or Morgan. So just in our situation, try to give us a little bit of a heads up of maybe, hey, we're coming on such and such day. That way we can gotta prep our front counter to say, hey, the Smith family's coming at one o'clock. That way they know to send you to one of us. Sorry about that. You're fine. Um, and just want to say thank you and give our appreciation to Amy, our ASL interpreter for this, this evening's presentation. Uh, thank you so much. All right, well, y'all, oh, where is the recording? The recording will be available on Facebook immediately following um, the session tonight. So as soon as we close the presentation and it gets a chance to uh, render the video, it will be available on Facebook. And then by Friday, it will be on our YouTube Office of Admissions playlist. So we're putting all of our admitted student sessions on YouTube as well. So thank you all so much again. We're gonna end our presentation like I always like to do uh, with a big go cards. Go cards. Thank you so much.